So I found that you know the cost is data from 2006. In Europe at that time, urea was $90 per ton. But in Kenya, Mombasa, it's 120. From the harbor to West Kenya, it was $400. And in Malawi, it's $770 per ton. So it's so expensive, people could not afford. Now, I come to food intake. So DES is dietary energy supply. So that is increasing even if people don't have enough to eat, it's hungry, they, they, they consume more food. This food is, the food is more, and the habit is changing. Now people are going from milk, you know, vegetable based diet to milk and meat products diet. Except Philly, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> and then per capita food production declined in 52 countries, sorry, 51 countries. So agri production should increase to me the you know, to me, the resources intensive diet, because it used to be vegetable diet, now it's more milk and meat based diet, so you need more energy and you know, nutrient to produce those food. So now I analyze. So this DES, the intake, food intake is directly proportional to income, is very highly significant. But, you know, dietary intake slows or plateaus if the income reaches around 5,000. So there are, uh, I forgot, there are many 65 countries or more with per capita income less than 5,000. That means, so these, the energy supply, the food supply should keep on increasing for many years. And then I did the regression. You see, most of the countries are in here, less than 5,000. So these countries, because income is increasing, will continue increasing the food intake. So what makes the difference? So they will release more pollute into the environment. Then agricultural yield, you know, I analyze, increases with fertilizer application rate. I think that's obvious and it's very, very highly significant. And uh, the interesting fact is, you know, the production decreased if you have more land. That means the developed countries don't have, you know, big chunk of land. But the poor countries, they have big chunk of land, but they don't know technology, maybe, you know, new cultivar, so many things, no fertilizer, and do not produce good. So if you check the land holdings, like Cape Verde is 0.12 hectare per person, and produces only 222 kilogram per hectare, just that. And the Sudan, it has almost 0.5 hectare per person, produces 452 kilogram per hectare, that low. But if you check off, let's say Belgium, you know the per capita land holding is only 0 0.8, 0 0.08, but produces 9,000 kilograms of food, so it's 20 times, 30 times more. And Netherlands is the second highest, I guess, is 8,500 kilogram per hectare. If you check the fertilizer use, Belgium uses, I think, only 111 kilograms per hectare. So this means so agricultural resources are underutilized in developing countries because you have land, but you, you are not producing as much as you could. So there is a potential for substantial yield increase. So you need better agriculture cultivars and increase fertilizer use, yeah. There should be worries about groundwater contamination if you use too much fertilizer? Oh, I didn't consider that. I, I, I am just talking good thing about urine, urine diversion. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that point come to, comes into play. Because when you use urine, because we treat it, yeah, that's the cost 166 kilowatt hour. That's the cost to treat urine before you apply in the field. So I hope there will be no contamination, except the salt thing. Yeah. So maybe a better way to ask that question is if you developed your data, you're obviously looking at yields as a function of your fertilizer use. Is there an assumption in your work that they've optimized the application of fertilizer to be fully taken up and does not 
not actually have, you know, are you not wasting fertilizer here that creeps down into the lower aquifers? Uh, yeah, uh, that's a good question. In developing countries, you know, the some of the people, a uh, fraction of the people use too much fertilizer, so you pollute groundwater. Like in China, in one city, I think, I was finding they use around 1,000 kilograms urea per hectare per year. But if you check the average, it's very low. Same thing for Nepal too. In Kathmandu, in Pokhara, big cities, the people use too much fertilizer and that you know harms the, the crop. But in rural areas, they don't get any fertilizer, not even one kilogram per hectare. So to me, for developing countries, it's not that they want to protect the environment and they use less fertilizer. They think that if you keep more fertilizer put in, it will be more production. But you know, these people, let's say, will be killing their crops using more fertilizer than needed. That's the case in develop many developing countries now. Uh, did I touch your question? Yes, you answered a different one. That's fine. Okay. So and then because most of the developing countries they don't have those you know plan for producing fertilizers that's why it's very expensive because they cannot afford imported fertilizer so they need some local on and on uninterrupted supply of fertilizer so now I come to under nourishment. So in 30 countries, if you check the data, the nutrient excreted from your body is more than they use fertilizer in their farm, in 30 countries. If you collect urine and use this fertilizer, so that fertilizer depletion rate will be more than fertilizer they are applying in 22 countries. So they apply less than 10 kilograms per, per hectare. So if all human waste, fecal matter and urine, is, is let's say captured and reused. So under nourish, under nourishment will be eliminated from the world if it's uh, rightly used. But Burundi, only Burundi will be left. Because they say current rate of under nourishment is 70%. Because their, their dietary energy supply is so low, the excretion is also very low. So they don't produce much fertilizer in their you know waste. So I calculated how much you know, what's the percentage, a fraction of population can be, you know, a lift off, can be, you know, we take out from under nourishment is only 11.5% 11, 11 if you recycle total waste and 10% if you recycle only urine. So all other countries will be good. So human waste should be, should react as a localized and uninterrupted source of fertilizer. But you need to treat it before you apply, yeah? So to recycle, you need technology. It should be economical to people. Society should accept it. And there are legal concerns. So here, if you want to use urine or fecal matter at, at your yard, maybe regulation doesn't permit you to do so. So I was thinking other way, because in city centers, because you have so many regulations, I was thinking maybe urine can be used as a nutrient source for wastewater deficient in nutrient, like industrial wastewater, like rag industry, beer industry, those things, very deficient in nutrient, hydrogen, and phosphorus. So if you collect urine, and then that urine, you see those urine dosing tank. So industrial wastewater goes to a primary treatment and settles down in here. So you mix urine with here, so the nutrient, you know, here then they are not de deficient of nutrients. So it can go with normal domestic wastewater treatment plant. Now, a sanitation alternatives. He, if it, oh, sorry. Here. Uh, because sanitation is a good alternative of sanitation and also has the potential of uh, urine, sorry, nutrient and estrogen capture. And if people know that urine has a lot of, uh, let's say, fertilizer or nutrient and is relatively safe, so increase can be 
the use can be highly increased. And then, is there a sustainable alternative? So, because there are 2.4 billion people without, let's say, sanitation facilities. Let's check. So, technology, that works fine because people are practicing already. It can work with both on-site and central mode. So, can satisfy a developing country and developed country need. And then, I got some data from WHO. If you want to you want to provide sanitation facilities to the per, to, to people to meet MDG Millennium Development Goals. The cost will be 11.3 billion just for on-site systems. If you want in-house in system or network system, it will be 136.5 billion, and that will be per year expenditure. So it's very huge. If you want to provide provide network system for all people. You need to spend almost 1760 billion dollars. But if it's Ecosan, this cost I get from, from UNEF, they have a cost ladder. It will cost only 160 to 175 dollars per capita. So much less. And ONEM is very negligible compared to central sewer systems. Now, is the technology okay? It's economical. We go if is society accept it or not. So we did an online survey in Hawaii, it was 2013 or 12, I guess. So we didn't get many responses, only 30% response rate. So we, we, we record those responses in six categories, so age, sex, education, occupation, religious affiliation, and ethnicity. And we tested the variable, it's again 5% level. If it's P is less than 0 0.05, then it's highly significant. Then what we got, if you check those, you know, people have the knowledge of wastewater management or treatment. They know that wastewater is treated. Only 20% were not aware of that, where does water go? And then UD toilet, people didn't know what UD toilet was. Only 20%, around 20% knew that UD toilet existed. And then but, you know, 66% of the people, they were aware that nutrients are there in the, in the waste. And then we asked whether people will allow you to allow us to install UDT if it's free. They say, yes, around, around 85%. But we asked whether you want to pay a little bit extra, but, uh, you know, willingness dwindled to 60%. But it's still, 60% people are willing to pay extra to have a UDT at their home. So, and then we ask people, if you want to use it, what's the, what are the motivating factors? And if you don't want to use it, why not? So what are the discouraging factors? If you see, so most of the people, they say because it consumes water, 80%. And 70% people say, oh, nutrient recovers, recovery of nutrients is good. And some people say, oh, even a new technology is a green. But the people that are discouraged because not much information around. And 46% people say it's expensive. Some people say also that technology not tested. So we conclude, so we, we, we try to calculate, relay those willingness to pay, WTP. Was it significant based on age, sex, religious, a whole lot of things. But they say not much different, but women were a bit higher, higher willingness to pay than people, but it was not very significant, only 0.252, so 25%. And then Caucasian had higher WTP than other people, and it was, it was significant, so they want to pay extra. And then older, you know, older age group, or educated group, because we have four category education, high school, undergrad, grad, and master in PhDs. And then those higher education people were we're in favor of UDT. And then, if you see the risk, we ask whether urine and fecal matter, they pose the same risk. And then, other younger people, they assume urine and fecal matter, they pose the same risk. But educated people and older people, they say no, urine is much safer. And then, acceptability increased with age and income. Thank you. 
Thank you, WRC team, supporting me for all my graduate studies. Dr. Michael Cooney, supporting me now. Thank you for listening. Any questions? Thank you. So, I suppose in your calculations, you never really got into, like in a developing country like the United States, what it actually costs. Of the urine, di really urine diversion system, you mean? No, you're not yet. Yeah, but the, the, we're not really thinking about this reinventing for existing infrastructure. You're not going to re, uh, yeah, re plumbing this. It's very hard, very expensive. Well, this is an entirely new, it's got to fit the new markets and it's got to be taken off. Yeah. In new housing structures. And yeah. So is there, is there anything going on in the United States? Oh, United States? States? Yeah. You know, you know, I think it was, I forgot the name of the company, they installed UD toilet. Uh, there are one company, I forgot the name. They use all UD toilet all over the, they're all offices everywhere. I forgot the name. And then now, you know the, I showed you the San Jose, the Santa Clara plant. Now what they do, what they tell people, if you wanna get connected to the central sewer systems, you go to separate urine. And because they say their uh, wastewater treatment you know, effluent goes to the water bodies that is very sensitive to nitrogen and phosphorus. So they cannot you know, put more nutrient in the receiving water body. So new housing has, has to have that UD. So, so what happens? Uh, can be central. What they need to do, they need to separate urine using the why the computers are separate piping systems? I was, if you separate it, they have a separate piping system? Yeah, yeah. Let me... They put in a separate piping system? Yeah, they need two. But it's the same one. Yeah, so... So what they do, they ask people that, you know, this, the main bowl, the fecal matter, yep. they are allowed to connect to the central sewer system. Right. And what has the urine treated? So urine they got to collect. On site treated at home. Yeah, or yeah. They have to put in measures and treat it. Yeah. They're they're in the very primitive stage. They they ask the master. How are they having people treat the urine? Oh I'm not aware of that. I think it was in the master plan. So they don't let any people to connect to the central sewer system unless they separate urine. Yeah. What's San Jose? It's San Jose. I think I get this, I think one, one and a half years back. Must be implemented now. Yeah. Also, Florida, they tried to call it urine, but they want to take phosphorus out in Florida. Yeah. Can you show the cost benefit of the city of the power company which has the cost benefit? I saw that. 90% of the savings was from water conservation in North Carolina. Oh yeah, it's, it's more from water conservation, you're right. Yeah, so from nutrient cycling it's only around $10, so... Yeah, uh, but you know uh, those greenhouse gas emissions? That's from nutrient. So because... What you're to say is that the benefit is more... The 90% of the benefit comes from conservation techniques rather than from recycling the nutrients? Yes. Water, wastewater conservation, yeah. And that's a big, because in Hawaii, I, I had uh, I had a chance to go through the report of Board of Water Supply. They say for a, each additional gallon they want to produce now, they cost $6. So if you save, you know, 10 cubic meter of water, or each household saves, so they don't need to drill more wells. I mean, if you want to produce, let's say, 100,000 gallon, so 600,000 dollar will cost for them. That's the motivation, yeah. You're right, yeah. The most of the thing is from water, waste water. So if, if there's less nutrients in the wastewater going to the central collection and treatment facility, mm -hmm. uh, does that affect the 
um, cost of treatment then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do they have to treat to a lower lower degree because they're not having removed the... Yeah, if you think of stoichiometry, the chemistry, one gram BOD is one gram oxygen. Yeah? But one gram ammonia to oxi oxidize, you need 4.5 kilogram oxygen. So 4.5 times. All the energy, most of them is for nitrification, denitrification. So if you take nitrogen out, so nitrification is out and denitrification also out. Okay. So you save a lot of energy. Yeah. Please. From my understanding, urine contains a lot of other salts besides just the urea. Um, have you looked into or uh, found any data on um, sort of secondary salt treatments before using it on crops, you know, especially in arid areas where uh, salinization of soils is an issue? Yeah, yeah, that's a very good question. You know, I. I think I mentioned something about salt concentration. There's a, if you have very high salt concentration, if it's very arid areas, you cannot use those urine. Mm -hmm. But you need to dilute that first, because when you flush, if you use a uh, UD toilet, flushing water is very little. So you got to use more water to flush it, so you dilute. Yeah, so they, yeah, they recommend, if there, I forget the exact Numbers, you know, the rainfall intensity, uh, in rainfall data, so much less than so much in inches, you don't use urine as a fertilizer without diluting it. Because the, the rain has to flush the salt down. Because otherwise, plant will be wilting point, they call, yeah? yeah. They will wilt it. No. Yeah, you're right. And then, kind of along the same lines, um, one of the reasons behind doing this is to remove hormones from the ecosystem. Have you seen any um, work uh, pertaining to uh, hormones bioaccumulating in plants or those cycling back through um, the food system? Is that something that... Yeah, uh, there are, yeah, there are research. research. They accumulate in plants too. The plant uptake those hormones and is bioavailable. But compared to plants, it's more dangerous to aquatic animals like fish, you know. Uh, I didn't put those slides in here, but there are several cases of sex reversal for fish, you know, other animals. So the crops that you'd be growing with that fertilizer, you would be getting the same hormones back? Yeah, that's the reason before you use, that's the calculation I make, so we want to remove 99% estrogenic potential first and then you use it. That's the cost. I calculated. There, there has been quite a bit of research done on that. Oh, a lot. And it's fairly negligible in all the states. I think in the stage two, they find, I think, some fishes with sex reversal. In England, many. In many cases. That's the reason I think EPA, because in CCL3, the contaminated candidate list, CCL2 in 2003, there was no hormones, you know, all those estrogens were not there in the list. In 2008, they are in the list means, so EPA is also focusing on, on those chemicals. So, it will be, I think, regulated in the future. I don't know whether they did it already or not, but they will do it. It's a big effect. And then because, the, you know, hormones use is increasing day by day, post control pills, you know, your muscle, your so many things, you know, energy, everything is hormone, yeah? So the hormone excretion will be a bit too high. So you should regulate that, yeah? So EPA will do that, I guess, in, I don't know when, but in the, in the near future. Yeah. Any questions? Thank you. Where did it go?